Welcome, and thank you for joining for another Whiskey Review. Today, we're taking a look at the new 2022 Long Row Red. Dustin, this time in 11 year, comes in at 57.5%, and the second maturation of this one is X Tani Port Casks. So, Dustin, uh, first I've say, glad you made out of the closet, finally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And back over here to my house, we could do some reviews. But uh, yeah, sorry, we uh, we have every last few times we got together, we had people over, and never got to reviews. And then we took a little trip to Kentucky, visited some people at Fourgate, some cool guys. So uh, yeah, forgive us, we've been a little uh, a little lesser as far as getting whiskey reviews to you lately. But we're back. It's amazing. We get like a month and a half, two months ahead, Mike, and then <clears throat> literally we get together a few times to drink, and we're like, yeah, we don't have time for filming. Let's just have fun. Buddy, I tell you what, it's just like money. It just evaporates right before your yeah. eyes. <clears throat> All right, so another Long Row Red. We were very, very complimentary of the 15-year. That thing uh, is a masterpiece. Year. Yeah, great whiskey. We bought a couple of them. Shout out to DJ Beacon for finding us some. Yeah. Uh, this time an 11-year-old. This time the Tawny Port. Let's get to it. Ooh, that's quite a bit sharper and danker. Yeah, so uh, we cracked this three or four times ago when we got together, Ooh, yeah. Mike. And wow. we've had it both the times I've been up here since. Um, it has not calmed down much. No. So, I mean, we've actually got it down to a pretty... I mean, that's fair. That's got some good breathing going on. The reason Dustin's uh, taking down this road is this This is, is very aggressive compared to last year's 15. Yes. Very young, very youthful comparatively, and uh, not quite the experience the 15 was. Yeah, we've been trying stretch. to get this to open up because we felt it was a little unfair just to jump in like we did on the 15, <clears> which... I'd, 15 was ready to drink. This yep. one was not. No. This hasn't improved it much, though. So, <clears throat> with the Tawny Port, it's not really getting like a super sugary sweet port. Mm -hmm. it, there is a sweetness to it, but it's more of a sickly sweet sort of smell. Dare I say almost grapefruit-esque. Uh, like the, the acidity. You, yes, very acidic. The, the feeling, not the actual notes. Yeah, it's a very acidic style <laughs> of, of port, uh, in, at the very least, I would say. It is stinging almost. Yeah. Dare I say matchsticks and burnt rubber? Uh, yeah, a, a, a twinge of flint, just as you strike it. I would say Zippo ladder right when you hit it, but yeah, a little bit of that. But also, again, burnt rubber. Yep, and you're at the you're at the Indy 500, buddy. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, now is this burnt tar or rubber? I, I sometimes get those associated together. This it's, might be tar. It's a hot day. I'm a sports car fan, as you know. Big, thick, wide tires mm -hmm. and black asphalt. Very dirty. This actually, I'm thinking more and more, this is fresh asphalt. With a but also... With a pungent sweetness. Yeah, and you know, there's a nice sweetness here. There's a good vanilla coming through. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not getting any distinct fruit note. Um, Tony Port is... You know, I haven't had enough like experience trying different styles of port, but I know Tony Ports are generally not where I get as excited. You know I like port, but this is not a port I... Mm. Like as much. Yeah, it's almost giving them like a red banana note. With a bit of, bit of sugar on top. <clears throat> Very acidic. Um... Very dirty. And you know, Long Road's a dirty whiskey anyway. Mm -hmm. But even for Long Road, this is very dirty. Sometimes, you know, I've had, again, we've had this three or four times over the last six weeks or so trying to get the best out of it. And I keep trying to like, you know, liken it back to, you know, some of the better versions I've had. And uh, there's not a lot to compare here. It's not only the youth, it's the fact that these 11 years come off young. Like, if you told me this was 7 years old, I'd buy that all day. I, you know, I'm thinking more and more that it's not even that it's so young. It's not even that it's so dirty. It's that there's just a crap ton of sulfur coming off of that yep. uh, port cask. And everything everything else might actually be really nice here. It's just, this is really sulfured. You know, this has subdued some from when we first popped this bottle. Because it was even more sulfur then. Yeah. Well, it's, it's brought out more of the sweetness now. I mean, I'm definitely getting more of the long row malt. I'm getting more of that bourbon cask. I mean, it's... I'm getting a, I'm getting about seven things I like and about two things I dislike. The problem is those two things are much more powerful than the rest. Yeah, they're overpowering the experience for sure. Yeah, it's like you go to a basketball game and you're not a LeBron James fan. I hate to tell you, but he's going to dominate the ball. <clears throat> All right, look. There's so, somewhat of a toasted note coming up here as I kind of mm -hmm. go at it a little bit longer. And I, and I don't know how to say this in a kind way, but it almost comes off like toasted locker room clothing. 
socks, <laughs> your practice jersey. You know what I'm saying? I just got the toasted note right before you said that. Right. I was gonna say much more like a just a nice buttered toast, but okay. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 funky. I'm almost. I mean, I'm almost getting like some kind of potpourri kind of a thing that's been toasted now. I, I agree. There's kind a of going in there. Bit of a potpourri aspect to it as well. I hate potpourri, by the way. <clears throat> like you have potpourri. Uh, sorry, this isn't ending well for any of us. Put that in your bathroom. I think I'm doing you a favor taking a dump. Really, I mean, it, 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 it's it's going back and forth on things I like, Mike, and things I don't like, and things I don't like are really strong here. Yeah, really strong. You get that same stinging wine influence note from it. Chalky. I mean, you get the long row kind of meatiness. That's recognizable. Begin. It comes off young. It comes off that tiny port is a sickly sweet taste comparatively to other some some of the other reds. <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, you know, here on the finish, it, it, the smoke comes back nice. It's pretty nice, like finish as soon as you swallow. It's that initial that initial wine sting of it up front is just too sickly sweet for me to enjoy, at least initially on the palate. But you know what? The best part of this experience is the finish, and at least we're here. And the finish is nice, <laughs> a little bit smoky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I'm getting a little aspartame on the finish, which is ruining it for me. Um, I'm a little different than Mike. I think up front, you get a really um, complex, uh, very um, kind of interesting whiskey experience with those sweet vanillas, um, some acidic, sharp fruits. Uh, you're getting uh, then some sulfur-infused wine, and then just some extra sulfur for fun. Sulfur uh, infused wine. That's it. Sulfur infused red wine. Yeah, I mean it's just it's a really sulfuric uh, red wine. But the way those three things play together, there's a little bit of spiciness, mm. a little bit of toastiness. I don't hate it. I don't enjoy the sulfur part. And again, I think we've talked about this, Mike. I'm not super sulfur sensitive. Neither are you. And the fact that we keep bringing it up is a sign that this is incredibly harsh on that. But I, again, I do like that vanilla note that's coming through. I do like that little bit of toastiness. I like the spice. Finish, you're right. Smoke starts coming up. I'm still tasting smoke. I like all that. A little bit of aspartame that I think is coming right off that tawny port. Not pleasant. Yeah. Um, any Anybody who knows Craig Allocky and have seen any of our reviews knows how glowingly I talk about that distillery. Whether it's standard bottlings mm. or it's uh, exceptional caps. So it, it, believe me, it's not, it's not the sulfur. But some people are very susceptible to sulfur, mm -hmm. and this is an absolute no fly zone for them. <laughs> yeah, I will say, Mike, I am liking with water a ton. You know, you mentioned vanilla earlier, and I was like, man, I really don't remember getting vanilla. So as soon as I hit the, with the water, I'll keep on. I'm looking for that note now. So it is there slightly, but it's just spoiled. It's spoiled by that same sickly sweet note from that cat from that tiny port to me. It's just. I'm it's getting toasted vanilla pastry right now, man. With a little bit of like overripe saying. fruit and a hint of sulfur now at the end. I told you about the, the red banana. That's really the only fruit I ever got there, other than whatever that sweetness is from the time. To me, this is almost like, you know, you know those toaster strudels? Oh, I remember toaster yeah. strudels. To me, this is like a toaster strudel where they've somehow gotten like a sour, like a, whatever that fruit filling was. It's not an overt, like obvious fruit. It's just kind of... Dirty blackberry. It's, it's fruit filling. Yeah, actually, it's probably a good one. Dirty blackberry. You know what? Um, I had a. I was looking for a soda not long ago at work, and there was like three sodas that have been sitting there forever because they were Dr Pepper dark berry. I know. Yeah. I never heard of it before, and it was terrible. But I, <laughs> I, I needed like something with sugar in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And by the end of that dark berry, I was like, you know what? I can relate to this drink and see why people would want it. And I'm telling you, the first two drinks. I wondered why anybody would put that in a can. You know what's starting to come through here is cream soda. Like an AMW cream soda. There's a foamy sort of foamy vanilla note to it. Yeah, I'm getting cream soda, man. I actually kind of like that. With water, I'm actually kind of digging this. There's some notes I don't like here still, but it's, I'm actually really coming around to it. Yeah, I mean, I knew from having this a uh, few times before that when I put a few drops of water, I was going to like it quite a bit better. And that really does with any whiskey that comes off mm -hmm. over, over sulfur. I don't care if it's a... you know. 
Sherrod McCallan, I don't care if it's uh, Long Row or Craig Allocke, that can be diminished to some degree by adding water on almost every scenario I can think of. What are you picking up, big guy? Water didn't help here. It, uh, it, it, it simplified the, the arrival. It took away that whole kind of battling between the toastiness, the vanillas, the fruits. Now it's just kind of generic sweet. And then in comes that sulfur. Now it's like a it's like a sulfur wood cask kind of that's coming through. I'm not even getting the peat as much now. It's subdued that even. Um, yeah, this is this is a big miss for me, Mike. Um, I agree. This is probably my least favorite of the Long Row Red series. As I said from our first drink, uh, you know I've really found that those the Long Row Reds. Eleven years is not enough, guys. Uh, that. The 13 year is where they really seem to shine. Obviously, the 15 went better, but I feel like 13 is what they, the minimum they need to get on these whiskeys. Yeah, I can't agree with you more, Dustin. All right, so look, man, let's, let's jump to the whiskey score here. I have thought this was the least of all the reds I've ever tried from the first time I had it and mm-hmm. every time I had it. Yeah. So I've been at two scores the whole time. And you know what? I'm just going to keep it real with you. 84. Where you at? I thought I was going to be really generous and blow your score out of the water by go giving it an 80. I thought you were going to go 70s. It's bad. Um, I mean, here's the thing. Cast strength. Positive. Big, bold flavor. No, well, true. Good mouthfeel. It, it does have viscosity. It's, vis- it's viscous. It's got all the stuff we want. It's got about two notes in there that I can't get past, and I can't get to enjoying the stuff that is good in this whiskey because they just ruined it for me. And in my opinion... Just, just my view. Sulfur in Long Row is a flaw. They generally try to avoid it, and when they let it come through, it's almost always disliked. I don't think the guys at Spring Bank are trying to showcase sulfur. They might not be opposed to having some in it, but I don't think that's a showcase piece for them. If I'm wrong, I'd love to hear from Spring Bank to find out that that's something they're going for, but I can't help but think this is a flaw, and that's why I drop it to an 80, despite having... All the qualities of an 88 whiskey. We don't, you don't need to overthink this. This is the least of the reds we've tried. If you value our opinion at all about this whiskey, which we've had over half a dozen, this is not the one. Especially how much this thing costs. Dustin, we don't need to go any further. Until next time, what do we wish the folks? Happy better drinking. We'll see you then.